Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're very welcome to our celebration of Mass today. It's Ash Wednesday, um, the prelude to the holy and joyful season of Lent, our opportunity to reflect and prepare a little better to live our baptismal commitment that we'll renew at Easter time. Hope, please God, together. Uh, uh, another celebration, another part of the church's year, which we're celebrating apart from one another. It's a measure of the impact on our lives of the pandemic, that everything, everything is affected by it and much is curtailed by it. But the gospel will emphasize for us when it speaks of those three great pillars of Lenten observance, prayer, fasting and almsgiving, that uh, there's an element of solitude which is significant and maybe this year gives us a particular opportunity. The prophet Joel will also speak to us about focus for activity. That we might celebrate worthily, we ask forgiveness, acknowledging our frailty and our weakness. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of our Christian service, so that as we take up a battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. Now, now it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes, oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, call the people together, summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her alcove. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, Spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said amongst the nations, Where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O Lord, Lord for, we for we have, have sinned. My offence, offences truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? Have mercy, have mercy on us, O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. 
Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervour sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, They have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. Your alms giving must be secret, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, Go to your private room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in that secret place, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not put on a gloomy look, as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your Father, who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the gospel speaks of the three pillars of light and observance, prayer, raising of the mind and heart to God, fasting, uh, doing without in order to remind ourselves that we are masters of our own life, not slaves to our appetites. And that's giving our opportunity, which we readily embrace in these days, to be supportive of those who are in need. It might... Um, intrigue you to see such emphasis however on doing these things secretly I understand and the gospel is at pains to point out that we embark upon these good deeds and noble acts not for the approval of others but for our own growth and development and there's a significant element in that aloneness which perhaps is particularly acute for us or apparent to us uh, this year. When we do things for others, I mean, things that are important to us and make us look good, that's fine. But the reward, I think, is probably fairly short-lived if there's much reward in that at all. But if we do things for ourselves, if we decide to embark upon something that improves my life, the lives of those around about me and the lives of others, then we gain a real sense of achievement and that ability to reflect on how we might grow, how we might change and how we might uh, improve um, is a a significant one for us and perhaps in recognising the significance of doing something for ourselves that betters us, gives us a, a sense of 
pride's not the word because it's, it's, it has negative connotations, but a sense of achievement perhaps, or a sense of having uh, achieved something that we have really wanted to do. Um, I, I remember a, a football commentator, it was in Italy, so there's always got to be a kind of element of philosophy with it. He said there are, there are three kinds of people on the pitch. He said there are uh, spectators, there are participants, and there are protagonists. There are those who let it all happen around about them. There are those who are part of the action. And there are those who provoke others to act. So we are invited certainly not to be a spectator in our own life. Yes, a participant, but more than that, a protagonist. We are the people who make things happen in our own lives. And it might take a little time of thought and reflection to make that happen. So for the courage of an enthusiastic and joyful Lent for each other and for ourselves, we pray today. I'm unable to distribute blessed ashes this year, but I will bless these ashes and in doing so, pray for myself and for you and for all the members of the parish community. The phrase we normally use is turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. We seek to do that. We have expressed our repentance and we've listened to the gospel. The ashes remind us, and I've done this all too frequently in the past few weeks, sprinkling a handful of soil into the grave of someone just buried. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. So we remind ourselves of our frailty, and we remind ourselves of the noble calling that we have as members of the family of God in baptism. And we ask for the ability to reconcile those two aspects of who we are, our frailty and our nobility. The Lord might bless and strengthen us as we bless these ashes, is our prayer. And there was a prayer given you in a variety of media at the weekend. If you have that prayer and you join in it, that would be a powerful moment for us all. My dear brothers and sisters, let's ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace our, each other and I will bless these ashes which would normally have been worn as a sign of penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers. Bless these ashes which we would intend to receive upon our heads. That we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, may through a steadfast observance of Lent, gain pardon of sin and newness of life, after the likeness of your risen Son, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And we pray for our needs. That this joyful season may remind us of our membership of the family of God and that we may, through prayer, fasting and almsgiving, live that commitment a little better. That all the members of our church may support and encourage ever more faithful worship of God and the service of each other. Lord, heed us. This time of Lent, Lent and reflection, may enable us to turn again to God our Father with renewed fervour. Lord, hear us. That we may hear God's appeal to love and to serve us, and so be reconciled with each other in every circumstance. 
Lord, hear us. That through fasting and namsgiving, we may more generously share our goods, our time, with those who are poor and alone. Lord, hear us. That the ashes we would receive today may be a reminder of our frailty, but also of our nobility through our baptism we'll sharing in the death and resurrection of Christ and our membership of his family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God our Father, hear our prayers. Enable us to celebrate a fruitful Lent. May our efforts of prayer, fasting and deeds of mercy lead us to renewal, reconciliation and Easter joy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacraments we will offer, Lord, at this annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, encourage us in works of penance and charity, that we may turn away from harmful things be cleansed of our sins and become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion, death and resurrection of your Son. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on works of charity, and participating in the mystery by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and saints, with the thrones and dominions, with the hosts and powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory, as together with them, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and the martyrs, St. Conville, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. While the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. 
and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healthy remedy. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for the celebration of Ash Wednesday. I wish you a joyful and fruitful holy season of Lent. We gather again tomorrow evening at six o'clock for the celebration of Mass. I hope you'll be able to join then. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.